Hey what's up guys and welcome back to new China product video. Today we'll check out what we can find inside of a fake MacBook Air. And it's some weeks ago after I've received the notebook and it's still working and also tried to upload the full review on the weekend. Sorry for the delay but I tried to install Hackintosh on it but due to incompatibilities with the chipset I failed. Anyway today I want to show you what's inside of this replica. If you want to see the unboxing of this notebook then please check out my channel or visit chinadevices.com for more information. And now guys, let's get started. Okay, so this is how the fake MacBook Air looks like and on the first look it really looks like a MacBook Air but if you turn it around then you can see that it looks different. So we have a detachable battery which we will remove and you can also see several screws here around the frame which we will remove and then we can raise up the back cover and see what's inside. And that's what I will do right now. And opening up this replica is really easy, so all you need to have is a Phillips screwdriver to unscrew all those screws here. First you have to remove the battery, then unscrew all the screws and then you can raise up the back cover. And now I will remove the battery. Now to remove the battery all you have to do is just unlock it. You can see those two sliders here on the left and on the right side. So just slide it here to the left and then it is unlocked. And now you can easily remove the battery. And when I have removed the battery, we will take a closer look at it to see how good it is. And here you have a closer look on the battery. And the battery is amazing slim, just to keep the whole notebook slim. It is detachable, so you can easily replace it. The only problem is, you just get it from China. It's made out of plastic and should be a lithium ion battery. It is almost as thick as my thumb. And now let's take a closer look at the stick on the battery to get some information about the capacity. The sticker says that it should be a lithium ion battery pack rated at 7.4 volts with a capacity of 3500 milliamp hours, which is about 26 watt hours. Okay, so this should provide two hours of battery lifetime. And now let's put the battery beside and let's remove the back cover. Okay, so now we have removed the back cover and here you can see the internals of the fake MacBook Air. So everything is pretty small, you can just see that the battery was placed here on this black plastic. Then here you can see the mainboard with all the important stuff like the CPU, RAM, Wi-Fi module and also the hard drive. Then here we got another PCB board with the power connector, the Ethernet and USB connector. Then on the top here we got the touchscreen panel. Um, it's pretty slim and works really good. And last but not least we got two speakers, one on each side and they're pretty big, they're almost as thick as the notebook. And now let's take a closer look at each area. And first of all let's start with the PCB which contains several important ports. So this PCB is connected with a cable to the mainboard and it contains several important ports and connectors like the power connector here. Left to the power connector we got a USB 2.0 port, it's a big one. Then here we got a 3.5mm headphone jack. Then we got a little microphone and this Ethernet port here. Also there's a speaker on the left side here which is connected with a cable to this PCB board and this whole PCB board is here connected to the main board with this big cable. And now let us take a closer look at the hard drive to see if it really has 500 gigabytes. It's easily replaceable, you just have to unscrew the frame and then you can pull it out of the connector. And it's a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive and let's see if it really has 500 gigabytes. And yes, it's a Western Digital Scorpio Blue with 500 gigabytes of capacity. And actually the quality of those Western Digital hard drives is pretty good. And they're not that cheap, so they retail for about 80 to 90 dollars here in Austria. And here you have a closer look on the mainboard. So here we got this little cooling system which consists out of the fan, a heat pipe and this heatsink here. So right under the heatsink here on the right side does the CPU. And the copper heat pipe conducts the heat here to another heat sink and the fan blows out the hot air on the back side of the notebook. And the CPU is a D2500 dual core CPU with integrated graphics. So it's not good for gaming, only some older 3D games, but it's great for portable use. Then here we got a RAM slot, only one RAM slot with one module. And let's take it out and let's see how many gigabytes it has. 
and it is a single DDR3 model with 4GB and it's maybe upgradable to 8GB but I'm not sure if it's supported by the mainboard and by the BIOS. Then now let's put it back into the slot and let's take a look at the next area. Then here you have a closer look at the next area which is right over the system fan. Here you can see the mainboard battery, it's point welded with this metal arm here, so it's a little bit harder to replace but it still should be no problem. We also can see a connector here which says 3G con, so maybe this is a connector for a 3G modem but this is not included and I'm also not sure where you can order a 3G modem which is connected with a flex cable. Then here we got the battery connector for the battery and last but not least we got here the hard drive connector. So it's a SATA connector and you can replace the hard drive with any 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. And we are now here on the opposite side of the frame and here we got a big USB 2.0 connector, a micro HDMI port and a card reader which is on the back side of the mainboard. Also here in the middle we got the Wi-Fi module which is in this connector and you can also see the antenna cable which goes from the Wi-Fi module somewhere to the frame. And the Wi-Fi module is replaceable, too bad that there's not a second connector to add a 3G modem, but therefore you get the port with the flex cable to add a 3G modem with a flex cable. Not sure where to get one, but yeah. And last but not least, we got here a connector for the speaker, and the speaker seems to be very strong, it's actually pretty big and makes a good sound. And now you can see how it looks like without the battery and without the hard drive. So you can see that there is actually not much hardware in such a notebook. We just have the small mainboard here with the cooling system, another PCB board with some connectors and basically that's it. And it's really cool that some parts are replaceable like the RAM module, the Wi-Fi module, the hard drive and the battery. But the CPU is not replaceable, it's soldered to the mainboard, there is no socket and you cannot replace the CPU. So you cannot replace the CPU and the GPU. You can just upgrade the RAM and the hard drive and that's it guys. And you will also find two magnets in the replica. One is left from the touchpad and one is right from the touchpad and those are needed that the display closes fairly. So there's no gap between the display and the keyboard and this works actually pretty good and the display doesn't come off so it stays closed until you open it up. Now the only thing which I don't like, which I also said in the unboxing, the whole frame is made out of plastic. So first I thought it is metal because it looked actually pretty good, but the whole frame and the whole body here is made out of plastic. It's actually pretty good plastic, so you cannot break it easily, as you can see right over here. I can bend it in both directions and it does not break, but it looks kind of cheap. And now some last words about the manufacture quality. So the only thing I want to criticize is the display frame. You can see that it is wobby and you can also see that there is a gap between the frame and the display. And actually it's a pretty huge gap so it's about 3 to 5 millimeters, and that's definitely too much. And I don't want to bend it because otherwise I will maybe crack the display but if I got some time I will maybe open up the frame and then I'll try to band it or put some glue between that. Okay ladies and gentlemen, we're now at the end of this video and now some final words. So the build quality is average. Pretty okay for the price but could be better. I would rate it with 6 out of 10 points. The hardware is not bad for about 250 USD. It's not a gaming machine and definitely does not come close to the real one. But it's good for portable use like for me on the university. I would rate it with 6, uh, no, let's give it 8 out of 10 points. Okay, that's it, the review is coming soon, don't forget to visit chinadevices.com and as always guys, thanks for watching and I hope I see you again in my next videos, bye bye.